And this is my 1984 Sanyo VCR, which I did fix, and it is in a lot better shape than when I found it. <laughs> because when I found it, this clock and oil display would flicker due to the bad capacitors and the power supply, which are common. I think only two, there's a couple that are bad. I just replaced all, except I replaced almost all of them. The two of them, one of them I didn't get the part, because I'm dummy and I didn't write it down and the other one I didn't see the 4.7 I thought it was a 47 so I had to put rob one out of a, a circuit board which tested good and the other one I just left in the machine I, I did test it and it's good and uh, you have your stop rewind play fast forward or review and cue pause record maybe I'll turn the last so you can see a little better VCR Stall at length QRS. No, QSR, QSR. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Your program, plus minus enter, which is also used for when you're entering the time in the clock. You have the timer, which is not going to be used anymore. Your channel. There is your, would be your channel indicator if it was on. Your tape counter. And uh, some of the lights, such as your calendar and everything. Your tape, your VCR, I mean, a tape in VCR, SPEP, -E and do. Level. That means. <laughs> oh, yeah, I don't know. Oh, well, I know what it means. Do sensor if there's any do on the tape. I don't think this thing has a detector. But then again, it might. I need to do a little cleaning. It's so dusty. Then you have your play, post, slash steel, record. Your tracking, which is all the way I'm going to put it back in the middle. I had there because it was playing an SLP tape, or what this one calls EP. It was okay. I mean, not the best, but then again, you can't expect much from a cheap, because it recorded on this. It on a, on a cheap, recorded on a cheap funai. Clock set, recall, cancel, all clear, demo, which dims the display. We preset, skip, which I've never used these. Tuning and fine tuning, enter and reset. And that's for the tape counter, I bet. And then you have it hooked up through the composite, and there's a DVD player. And on this TV, it is out of place. I haven't found an 80s television. I want one with like the, like, has like the red LED on the side, and you have like the channel up and down. That's what I want to find. And I intend to find one. Even if it takes years, because this is from the 80s, 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 80s. Made in China, few night garbage from the year 2004. Must go. Even my alarm clock's old, and I can put an 80s alarm clock. But it, TV works, but it sound, I don't, don't like it. It's a Funai, and I don't like Funai. I had a Funai Magnavox. It's lasted eight years, and it still works, but I want a good quality. I did fix this thing, and I played tape last night, and it's still working. I don't know why this is white. That's how I found it. I might be able to clean that. I don't think so. But this thing here doesn't... Oh, and also, you see it has an infrared sensor, wireless remote. With 1984, you wouldn't think that, most people wouldn't know this, but I can show you, that so this remote that I bought last year for the TV, I have it put under the Blu-ray, but if I do that, if you watch, I can control a 1984 VCR with a brand new Universe remote, still have the code, pretty cool. And that's, I've, since I had the remote, I programmed it, but this Sanyo, and if you get one and you have flickering clock, you should replace all the capacitors in the power supply. It's just recommended, even though this is not like a Panasonic, I would do it anyway. Granted, I replaced three belts. So two for the loading mode, because the motor is here. It has a little belt that goes here to slow it down, and it has a belt that goes from here. They were loose. I think they work still. 
There was another belt that went from the motor to here. I replaced that, and there was a rubber tire, idler tire. And I did not go put an O-ring on or anything like that. I pulled off the pulley, and I took off, and it was just a square ring type belt. I mean, it was like round. And I went online, and I went and looked at square section belts. And uh, at ellieelectronics.com, and I looked at the one that met, fit the dimension. So there was a hella cross section and a few others. I got the one that, well, that was the same thickness and everything, and it was the exact same thing. So even though you can't, back in the day, you would just replace the whole assembly. Like you pull it off, you would, like, little, whatever type of clip it uses, I don't know, you would replace the whole thing. But then again, they haven't made those for a long time. And just because, and for you use O-rings, but you can buy that part. It fits perfectly fine, and I rebound and played, and it has no no damage. And it's the best piece I've ever owned. I'm going to clean it a little bit, but then again, in this house, cleaning is something I don't normally do, because uh, <laughs> it doesn't help. And when you don't have a flashlight, it doesn't look too bad, but I'll probably give it some cleaning. I've done it. It's better than what it was, but this was this was a... If I wouldn't have stepped in, this would be in the landfill rotting away and would have been one last, one less VCR. But luckily, my grandma was looking at that sale and saved it for me because it didn't work. And it's and then I'm gonna use it until nothing can be done to save it, and it'll be put on a shelf and displayed for people who what we used to use back many years ago. Well, oh, this isn't getting thrown away, even then it doesn't work. It'll be put on a shelf for display. But that could be a while. Is that is it? Because this it, is used as a die cast uh, aluminum hmm, mechanism, and it has a 107 cable, cable channel cable compatible. And it, it been this year was the last year the cable company broadcasted an analog. But let's say if I would have fixed this when I got it, which would have been a year or two, probably last year, I could have used this thing for almost a whole year, and maybe tune channels in and record. So I missed my opportunity. But I didn't, I ain't fast at fixing it. I don't fix things fast. I was, this is one of the first VCRs I ever fixed this extensively. One of them was just a simple belt change <laughs> and it's been working. But this one I really did do what I could to get it going. And I'm going to put an 80s TV and anything in. I'm here, I might as well show you what's hooked up to it. Of course, we have my trusty Nintendo 64, which was my brother's, which he got it back when it was new. And I've had it since. And that is the box found it at my grandma's because that's where it was put. And it's faded a lot because it's been next to a fluorescent light. And this thing still plays perfectly fine. Dusty, of course. Got my Panasonic DVD, DVD player, which I got in 2014. And it's dust proof, which <laughs> I don't know if that's good or bad, but it works. It hasn't been used that much. We have this Pioneer stereo with radio and everything except the. Cause and all this. The cassette doesn't work. CD player works, even though it has three belts. The belts aren't bad. What happened was, the laser was making screen noise and I adjusted the focus, and the gear recently fell off, and I noticed that the clip was missing, and I put a clip off an old VCR, and it's been working. And of course, she got me a tally, but the only thing I've done to it was just clean the controls with some deoxid, and it's hooked up to the TV's channel input and these good old Sony speakers granted that happened when I was carrying them in this particular particle but the speakers are in great shape the cones and they were free and if you know it's not in no good shape they sound fantastic and the DVD player here is hooked into the video input because this is a mono VCR you might as well plug it into the TV it ain't gonna sound if it was a hi-fi and it would I still am gonna find a top looting VCR because those things are cool and I don't have one but then again, that could be easier said than done, because I haven't even seen one in real life. No long have them. But granted, I'll find it eventually. <laughs> well, I can't, I'll, and the video I was going to put of it working, because I had a little video of it playing a tape with the cover off, I didn't like how I was talking. I sounded stupid and wasn't doing too well. I, and on my phone, it makes me sound quite a bit funny, the microphone, and I can't stand to listen to myself play back, uh, have my videos play back around me, because it makes me sound funny, and it just kind of bothers me for some reason, but and here's the inside look of the mechanism. I did clean the video head, I don't know if I did the best job, and um, it's really well made, 
and I'll probably need to get a new pinch roll eventually because it's starting to get cleaned. It's starting to crack on top, and I tried my best. I cleaned that the capstan vest I could, but it didn't want to come clean too well. But I cleaned everything else, and this is a good VCR. And but and you know the reasons they put these RF shields in, and when people complain, why would they would do that? It's because it prevents all the f interference because if you put it close to a TV like this the high voltage can interfere and and if it's and I was told that that helps prevent like TVs and stuff from interfering with the video signal and that's what it's there for and it's grounded so what that does is, is that so if you got a TV or any electrical device instead of interfering with the video it will get rid of it. And if you have a newer VCR made in China and all that doesn't have that, if you put it next to an old CRT TV, you'll really know how bad it will look. And that's why all combos have that, because that prevents off interference via the video head. But that's why they have that, is to prevent interference with the machine. So, it might be distort your view, but it's, it's there for that reason, is to prevent interference. That's why they did it. And also, with all electric sensors, these TVs have a high voltage. It is like that. And granted, this the VCR fits perfect. It's going to be there for years to come. I'm going to be one. I watch. I get a lot of movies on tape because I get them for 25 cents and free, and I'm not going to stop until I can't, I can't play them because there's no more VCRs. All the tapes fall apart from being old enough that they just were done. But that ain't happening for a few more years. Oh, I don't know how many years, but so it is. I played an old 1980s World Runner and Wiley Coyote tape on that thing, which is pretty worn. I mean, it's been played, who knows. It's one of the Warner Brothers first tapes, because it has the old Warner, Time Warner or whatever logo with the, not the WB, so it's a pretty old tape, but it plays very good and for this age and how long it's been around. So, and remember this, another reason about VCRs, I never will buy a used DVD, because if you think of it, I've n I, out of 150 tapes I bought, I've only had one that didn't play. But on DVDs, I've been burnt too many times. Because you don't have to see it for it not to play. Like I had a Harry Potter disc, it had disc rot, and I didn't even notice. So, I like DVD. I don't mind buying new DVDs, but I won't buy a used DVD unless it's guaranteed or it's new. But a VHS tape? Oh yeah. That's how it's gonna be. Well, that's all.